The Sea of Galilee Although not a real sea, it has remained named as such due to the staunch traditions, mainly religious which have grown and flourished from around its shores. The first century historian, Flavius Josephus for example, was so impressed by the areas surrounding the Sea of Galilee, he once wrote, quote, One may call this place the ambition of nature. Reporting a thriving fishing industry around the lake, with well over 200 boats regularly working the waters. Archaeologists have since discovered only one such fishing vessel, found in 1986. It has been nicknamed the Jesus Boat. According to Christian religion, much of the ministry of Jesus Christ himself actually occurred upon the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and a recent discovery within the waters themselves has continued to perplex specialists within the area, astounding all who have been exploring said discovery. The mysterious structure is cone-shaped, made of unhewn basalt cobbles and boulders, and weighs an estimated 60,000 tons according to researchers. An astonishing size, making it much heavier than any of our modern-day warships. Rising nearly 32 feet out of the ancient sea's sediment, it also has a diameter of about 230 feet. Stonehenge, for example, which is an impressive ancient structure in its own right, has an outer stone circle diameter of only half that. First discovered in 2003 using sonar exploration of the southwest portion of the sea, divers have since been down to investigate the presumably ancient structure, writing regarding their finds within the latest issue of International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. Researcher Yitzhak Paz, Antiquities Authority, and Ben Gurion University believes it could date back more than 4,000 years. Quote, the more logical possibility is that it belongs to the 3rd millennium BC because there are other megalithic phenomena from that time that are found close by. Paz told LiveScience.com in an interview, noting that those sites are associated with fortified settlements. Could it be that this is where the peoples of Bet Yura buried and honored their dead? Is this a proverbial city of the dead, or something else entirely? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we understand this amazing structure for what it truly once was. We will of course keep you posted. We have, in the past, covered the curious visitor to our solar system, known as Oumuamua, the first interstellar object ever recorded entering and exiting our solar system. During its transit and subsequent slingshot from our Sun back into the galaxy, countless astronomical institutions trained telescopes and other data-gathering instruments at the object in attempts to decipher what exactly it could be – a simple comet, an object of alien origin, or even a satellite sent to take pictures of our planet, sent by an advanced alien civilization, possibly to get a closer look at us. Interestingly, one individual who publicly put forward the most compelling evidence to suggest the latter is that of Avi Loeb. Receiving a PhD in plasma physics at age 24 from the University of Jerusalem, becoming a long-term member at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, Loeb has recently made another incredible discovery. Quote, Scientists have discovered material on Earth that originated from outside the solar system in the first discovery of its kind. The study explained how 700 individual particles or pieces of debris were found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and are made of an alloy never seen on Earth. It continued, this is a historic discovery because it represents the first time that humans have publicly put their hand on materials from a large object that arrived on Earth from outside the solar system," he said to the Jerusalem Post. With the recent comet fresh in his mind, he set out to unravel the mystery of whether this had indeed been the first interstellar traveler to attempt to spy on Earth, and he believes he has found the answer. His search has involved a strange meteorite which exploded over the ocean at 3.05 a.m. local time in 2014, retrieving several alien alloys several millimeters thick from waters about 1.6 kilometers deep. Loeb believes the meteor, known as IM-1, was in fact a long metallic craft, just like that of Oumuamua, and that his work will lead not only to officially being declared the first to ever discover interstellar materials, but these objects are, in fact, alien materials. The question is, what does Loeb know that we don't? Loeb says that, quote, not only was IM-1 moving more rapidly than our solar system, 
but traveling faster than 95% of the stars nearby. However, even factoring this in, it's not clear how it achieves such momentum. The meteorite made of something extremely tough, instead of breaking up in the Earth's upper atmosphere, IM-1 held on until it reached the lower atmosphere. Exactly what it was made of remains a mystery, but it was far stronger than steel. We found that its material strength a few times bigger than all other space rocks. We will keep you posted on further developments. It is a study which we find highly compelling. India is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of ancient sculpture. And although Rome is home to the Renaissance, an attraction which lures enormous numbers of people there every year, India is unquestionably home to sculpture, which would put even the most efficient of the Italian masters to shame. However, conveniently, academia, and thus most of the modern world, overlook these astonishing feats of ancient art in favor of less controversial artistic wonders. One of our tried and tested methods of establishing whether an ancient artifact, or indeed an ancient ruin, attributed to a less capable, more modern imposter, is actually evidence of forgotten lost knowledge, is finding the puzzling accomplishments often hidden within the architecture or construction. One of the many examples of these is polygonal masonry. These very old walls, created without the use of mortar, are compelling examples of a fragmented technique, either borrowed or, possibly intriguingly, leftover memories of a now forgotten technology. And although these more modern attempts range in age stretching far into thousands of years, the lesser capability of the builders is clear for all to see. Our point being that when these ancient walls stretching far before the Romans are compared to Mesoamerica, Peruvian, and indeed ancient Indian ruins, the exquisite polygonal architecture, the precise carving and stone building present, are clear, strong, controversial evidences of a forgotten civilization. How did these ancient builders acquire such a sophisticated knowledge and awareness of stone shapes, and the subsequent placement of each stone, perfectly placed against one another, forming impenetrable barriers which have stood the tests of the ages? We feel that, regardless of what academia claims is the truth, pertaining to the origin and creators of these ancient wonders, the skills required to create them are thankfully beginning to become apparent to the majority, rather than the few. This ancient, forgotten people clearly attained a level of stoneworking and construction knowledge we are yet to acquire. Clearly, a far more advanced and capable people than we are today, let alone the modern historical imposters academia claims as the culprits. We feel, regardless of others' claims, the evidence to suggest an intercontinental, highly advanced, technologically superior civilization once flourished here on our planet is highly compelling. Many of the most astonishing ancient sites found here upon our planet are often just the tip of an archaeological iceberg. Although millions of people flock to such sites as Teotihuacan, Chichen Itza, the Great Pyramids, etc. each year, the actual enormity of the undertaking that these sites indeed once were is unfortunately overlooked, walked upon yet ignored year after year. It is no secret that to build the enormous steel and glass structures of today, a foundation of a similar size will be utilized. These foundations allow for such gigantic weights to be placed upon these specific locations, and the sites of the past are no different. Only ever truly appreciated from the air, these gigantic plateaus are all that is left to allow one to accurately calculate the true size of these ancient monuments. The Giza Plateau, for example, although rarely mentioned by Egyptologists or indeed tour guides, is an area of flat sandstone that has for many years been argued as once having been man-made. Many factors go into such a hypothesis, the most important of which being the realization of the requirement to build on this specific site, 
a realization only in its early days, consisting of alignments with celestial pathways and indeed Earth's own energy grids, known in England as ley lines. Indeed, the perfectly flat, efficient vegetation barriers found within Mesoamerican rainforests are also still clear testament to the ancients' past capabilities and the vast undertaking these sites once were. Yet we feel the most astonishing of these ancient plateaus can be found in Chile. Predictably, like the many other clearly manufactured plateaus, it seems this must also be argued as a natural formation. Known as El Enladriado, it is an astonishing ancient site, located atop a 2,300-meter-high basaltic mountaintop. 233 megalithic stones, once masterfully placed in a geometric shape, form an artificial amphitheater atop the mountain, some of the stones being over 10 tons in weight. Three enormous standing stones were found in the center of the plateau. Two were discovered to have been aligned with magnetic north, while a line through one of these and the third stone points to the summer solstice. Interestingly, however, UFO sightings and claims of otherworldly activity is what the site is most famous for. Many sightings of shining spheres going into water or wooded zones without any human explanation. In 2008, Chile's tourism service brought UFO spotting into the mainstream by turning the site into the country's first official UFO trail. Just what is going on at El Enladredo? Who built such an enigmatic ancient site? Why did they choose to build it atop a mountain? And is there really a UFO connection yet to be unraveled? Clearly a bizarre plateau that someone, at some point in history, went to tremendous effort in creating. Also, the attempts to argue it away as a natural formation are all factors we find highly compelling.